Let's take a look in the editor and the first thing you want to do when you're working in the editor is you want to point your folders to whatever you're going to be working in. So uh, similar the same way as you would go to another scenario, uh, you want to point to that folder and in this case I'm going to point it here to the classic folder and then exit out of that, go back to this startup screen and then click on this open the editor button and you'll get the editor to open in the map section. There's two sections to the editor, the map section and the uh, force slash unit section. And you'll want to go to open the scenario and you'll see that, like we just did, it's pointed right to this folder. So this is where I can open the scenario that I want. And when I go to save it, it'll point right back to there also. And uh, the first thing I want to show you is the scenario dump which can be used for many different things. That's this uh, in the file drop down menu up here, dump scenario as. You want to add the txt extension in so that you get a text file, otherwise it uh, saves it as an unusable file. So make sure you put in txt, then point it somewhere that you're going to be able to find it. I usually go right to the desktop, save it there, and you're going to end up with a file that looks like this and it's generally very large. It has all kinds of information from the scenario in it. And it starts off with the uh, briefing and all the notes that the designer put in. Now with this dump file, you can search for things that you might want to and things that would find you might find useful. Uh, valued objectives, for example, control F, search the file just like you would any other text file. It'll tell you all of the objectives that are in the scenario and their values. You can also search for the supply points, which is uh, sometimes they're, they're not easily seen on the map. Uh, you can get this printout right here that tells you where all the supply points are for each side. Uh, this dump file also runs through all the events and all of the units. You can see how big this file is as I scroll down through it. It's got all kinds of information in it that if you're troubleshooting a scenario, if you're looking for something, it's very easy to run this scenario dump, do the control F, type in what you're looking for, and you can find it. Uh, like I said, for troubleshooting scenarios, if you're editing or designing, you can uh, troubleshoot a lot of things. You can find things in here. If you need to know if you already used a unit name, just so many things you can use this for. It's really a great tool. So let's go back to this scenario that I was looking at here and you can, uh, like I said, you, this is the map part. You can edit the map. You can edit all the different aspects of the scenario. Let's go to the deployment and we'll talk about changing colors because uh, we know that sometimes when you open up a scenario and look at the what you're seeing, you may not like the unit colors. Any, you can change the unit colors if you want. It's no big deal. You go to uh, edit forces, it brings up this box that has all the units and all the forces. It always defaults to the available systems when it first opens. If you click on this button here, and remember watch your uh, information panels on your mouse overs, it tells you everything that, that's going on. Click on this button here to get out of that weapon system and now you have a list of all the units and all the formations that they're in. And you can see it scrolls on through all of them. Click on any unit, it brings up that unit on the left hand side of the screen. Um, I want to look at these, uh, this scenario because let's say for example, um, I don't want to have these uh, yellow Italian units that I see on the map. It's, I just don't like yellow. So once I find them here, I can show you how to get rid of that. Um, or uh, rather, I should have said the yellow uh, South African units in this scenario, uh, which are on the other side. So you click this button. Sorry, hit the wrong one. Click this button. Now you've got this side, and I've got the yellow units. So to change the color, it's very easy. Yeah, click on this color button. It gives you the color palette. You can change it to anything you want. And let's say uh, I want to make them red just for the heck of it. Now, that changed one unit, and you can go through and change them to, you know, whatever you want, one by one, or you can change them by formation or by force, in other words,
where it's changing every unit color in a formation or every unit in the entire force by using these uh, uh, selections here from the edit drop down menu modify the current force there's all sorts of different things you can do including the unit colors and when you click on this now it's going to change you have to pick which one it is first and then pick the one you want to change it to and then it's going to change every unit in this force to the color that you picked and I believe it's this one and then let's make them all say blue and now you'll see that all those yellow units are blue this one was a different unit color it had the uh, yellow outside and the blue inside so let's say I want to change that one modify current force unit recolor that would be this one and then let's make them all uh, let's make them all dark blue and there you see it changes those to dark blue so you can see this way it's real easy to go through and change the unit colors to whatever you like uh, specifically to whatever your preferences are now there's two things you need to know about uh, the ramifications of when you do this the first one is formation cooperation and there's a video on that if you don't know what that's about changing the unit colors can affect that in some scenarios especially where the scenario designer specifically has very different colors for different formations and like I said that's covered in the formation uh, video and the second uh, problem could be withdrawing uh, of armies there's an event that designers use that's called withdrawal army and that's used to withdraw more than one unit at a time it can withdraw every unit off the map if it wants to and the reason that has an issue uh, with colors that you might trip over if you're changing colors is withdrawal army event uh, it sounds like it would withdraw an army but it doesn't it, it withdraws by unit color so let's go back to that scenario dump that we were looking at and there's an easy way that you can check this before you change colors I know this all sounds compli complicated but it's the first time you hear it it is but once you understand it see it and do it uh, you'll see that it's it's not difficult at all you want to search this scenario dump for the withdrawal army event and bingo here's one right here not all scenarios have them I probably would say that, that most of them don't but in this case this scenario is keyed to withdraw all units that are the same color as this axis unit so now that you know this you can go back into that formation list go back through look through the units find this unit find out which color it is and then you'll know if you're changing colors to the same as this or changing this color to another color that you could trip up and mess up the scenario uh, because every unit that is the same color as this uh, will be withdrawn you should also search uh, not just once but you know continue searching to see because some scenarios have multiple withdrawal army events and you'll see there's another one and there's another one and there's another one so in this scenario it's problematic if you're going to be changing colors uh, you have to do a little bit of work to figure out what the original designer's intention was a lot of these old scenarios have the color schemes uh, right at the top of the um, scenario briefings so what you can do using this is you can add in your changes that you want to make you know just type in the change you want to make and then you can kind of look back and see that whatever the intention was of the designer you're sticking with because you're keeping the colors all the same or rather you're keeping the same colors for units that are being withdrawn if you follow what I'm saying there and the next thing you can look at is uh, sometimes you might want to change a unit's name when you're looking at uh, say the units on the map and you, you don't get what this designer was naming the units as or you know that uh, some of these scenarios were designed years and years ago and the information wasn't all that good uh, so there, there's multiple reasons why you might want to change unit names and you can do it the same way go into this force box and the force editor scroll through find the unit you want to change and here is the unit name right here and you can change it whatever to whatever you want to um, and there is uh, 
uh, one ramification on that. Um, the uh, withdrawal army event, if it's keyed to this unit name and you just changed it, it's not going to work. So you want to search the scenario dump uh, in case of that. And you also just want to generally search the scenario dump first, type in the unit name that you want to change it to, and see if it's in there anywhere. That way you know that you're not duplicating something that could also create an issue. In addition to the withdrawal army event, which is, again, the event that withdraws multiple units, there is one other event called withdrawal unit. And if the unit that you're changing names to, uh, changing the name of, rather, is has an event to withdraw, then you'll mess that up by changing the unit name. Um, a lot of times in the editor itself, in the event editor, if you change the unit name, it will stick to the new name in the editor. It'll automatically change itself. But I can't guarantee you that because I've seen it not do it at some points depending on how much modifying you've done in this section over here. So it's always a good idea to run that scenario dump, check for the unit name, find out if it's mentioned anywhere in, in the event editor, and if it is, it will tell you in the scenario dump which event it was. Uh, I'll go and show you that. Let's see if there was a withdrawal unit event in this one. Okay, so there's one. Uh, event 97 is a withdrawal unit event. Then you would go up here to the edit drop-down, edit events. Now you just want to go down to event 97. Here's event 97. Now, if you had changed this the unit name, uh, you just want to get, after you do that, you want to go back here and make sure that it is still at that unit name. In some, most cases it is, in some cases it's not. You just want to make sure that it is, has been changed to the unit name that you changed it to. If not, just go in here and change the name. And there you, oh, there's actually, that's not a unit, right? Let me make sure I spell it right. If it's not an actual unit, it has to be exactly right. Uh, and I had it spelled wrong the first time. There it is. If, if there's no unit in the order of battle uh, as to what you put in here, then it's not going to take. And if you spell it wrong by either a character or a letter, it's not going to take. Uh, there's also one thing I'll mention here. Uh, the, a lot of these old scenarios don't do this. And, uh, you know, some scenario designers designing new ones don't do this. But I like to key these uh, events, uh, put a hint or whatever you want to call it in here so that you know. Uh, later on, if you're working on a scenario, if you're designing a new scenario, uh, if you put this line in, debug, and then the name of what's there, if it ever changes for whatever reason, when you go back through the editor, you will know what it's supposed to be in the first place. And debug tells this event editor not to uh, print this out as news during the game. So this is not seen during the game. If you put debug in front or behind or I think anywhere, it doesn't matter. Uh, but this is an easy way uh, it, to, when you're troubleshooting and finalizing a scenario, to make sure that everything is keyed to what it should be. And uh, it helps me out a lot. You can also change the names of the formations if you're so inclined. And um, this button here will show you the units of each formation. And you'll see that these formations are separated on the right-hand column here. These are the units. These are the formations that they're in. And you can see all the different formations. Now, if you're going to change the name of a formation, do it right here. Also, be aware that there are events that key on the formation name. So you'll want to run that scenario dump and search that file for the new name uh, for the old name that you're changing first to see if it's any involved in any of the events and also run your new name just to make sure that it's not already in there somewhere and there's not an event that's keyed to it that could trip you up and make a mess out of the scenario for you.